welcome to Sky Lounge. I'm your girl, Bonnie Banks, and we are with the talented singer, producer, um, actor. I mean, you have so many accolades right now. <laughs> <for either name. laughs> but we are here with Thomas Hobson um, to talk about the dramatic film with uh, the dramatic film of George M. Johnson's best m memoir, All Boys Aren't Blue. So welcome in. Welcome in. Thank you very much. Good to be here. Yes, I'm glad to have you in. So one thing we like to do here on Sky Lounge is icebreaker so people can get to know you a little bit more. Um, okay. It's just a little fun game, nothing too stressful. So, you know, no pressure. <laughs> All right. Okay, so this one is called Finish the Sentence. So I'm going to start the sentence and of course you will finish it. Easy? Okay. Yep. All right. So if I could write a short story, what would it be about? Ooh, that probably changes daily, but right now it'll be about grief. Oh, that's deep. Yeah, deep. I know that's deep. That's deeper than it should have been, but yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> okay. Okay. What's going on with grief? Is it COVID or? Um, no, you know, my, uh, my, my grandfather passed away natural causes, uh, 96 okay. years old uh, in September. Um, mm -hmm. And, you know, it's just, I miss him. So uh, that's, that's where my mind drifts to a lot. I had a lot of time with him. So I'm appreciative, but also, you know, selfishly, I wanted a little more. So. Of course, of course. My condolences. Okay, next one. Being a Black man means? Uh, ooh, being a Black man means, I want to say everything and I want to say versatility. I want to, I think that people think of blackness, especially black maleness, uh, as very monolithic, that there's only one way, um, you know, to be black and to be a man. And, uh, you know, what I kind of love about this project is, you know, um, my, my black manliness has never really matched up with society's idea of what it's supposed to be. But like by birth, I'm a black man. So whatever package I come in is, is, is that. Right. Versatile, diversity. Oh, diversity God. yeah yes i like it all right when i think of black boy joy i think of <sighs> um <laughs> you know um for me it's it's uh family mm -hmm. um my, the immediate thought in my head was like my dad and my brother uh you know and just laughing with them yeah i like that i like that last one Okay. All boys aren't blue means to me. Uh, I, I think it goes back to my answer about what it means to be a black man. Like all boys aren't blue. All boys are not, all boys are not, uh, that I think we don't give boys the space that they need mm. to be everything they want to be. That, um, you know, growing up, I was artistic and emotional and all of those things. Uh, luckily, never by my family, but by outside forces would be, you know, weaponized or scrutinized. And, you know, I think for me, like the most beautiful thing about the book and also about the project we made together is that George is telling their story. And then you have the three of the three actors who've come in who are coming at, you know, George's story from our own perspectives, mm -hmm. you know, and I think that's really what the book is about. It's about remembering that there's not one way to be anything. Right, right. I love that. And just talking about the book and what George did, um, we know that black and brown people have high numbers in HIV and AIDS. And this event that you're doing February 8th is going to support the AIDS Healthcare Foundations. And National Black HIV AIDS Awareness is actually the day before, Sunday, mm -hmm. February 7th. So with this collaboration, what type of response do you hope to receive? Uh, I just, I want everybody to watch it. I want everybody to listen. Mm -hmm. uh, I think we have a habit as humans of, uh, of, of, of not listening. Um, uh, you know, as a black man, as a queer man, it is so frustrating uh, in, in all of those spaces to have to explain myself to people when I'm just like, if you would just listen, mm -hmm. I'm telling you my story. You can't take away from me my story. So don't tell me what you think you know. I'm telling you you know, my experience. So I hope that people really come into it and just listen. George has such a story to tell and it was just such an honor to be, uh, you know, a conduit through which that story could be told. Um, right. And I mean, and I think, like I said, it was hard not to, you know, because, you know, I've, I've had some of those same experiences. And so it's just hard not to 
you know, draw those connections and remember those times when people weren't that nice or things didn't go so well or, you know, uh, so that's what I hope people take away, the humanity of it. You know, I think like one of the things the last four years uh, politics has kind of gotten us in is that we've forgotten, hey buddy, we've forgotten like, we've just forgotten to listen, we've forgotten to be human, we've forgotten to be humane, you know? Mm -hmm. um, so that's what I hope people get out of this long answer. Yes, no, I completely understand that. It's just the taking the time to actually understand and listen at the same time without having to react to something. But but just, to react, yeah, and also right. like that a lot of, within the black community, there's so much stigma, not just around HIV AIDS, but there's still stigma around queerness. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and, and those things feed into each other. And so until we can really tackle like the idea that there's nothing wrong with you, that you were born the way that you are, that God loves you just the way that he made you. Um, right. We're not gonna do away with the stigma of HIV AIDS because people are still gonna be scared to truly be themselves and, and get tested and, and protect themselves and take all those things that when you're a young person, you think if I go buy that, someone's gonna know, you know, like, mm -hmm. uh, you know, so we have, to, we, have to, we have to tackle all of that and conquer all of that. Yes, you mentioned being able to relate to a lot of the experiences in this dramatic film. So how did you feel when you got the book for this part, book for this role? Um, gratitude. Um, and that's been my word for the last uh, few months, just trying to remember to live in gratitude and to take everything uh, in the moment and be grateful. And, and I, uh, the director, Nathan, will tell you that like, after he texted me and said, you know, we want you to do this, I was like, you want me to do this with these other people like you do understand <laughs> these other people are phenomenally talented people mm -hmm. uh, and he was like yeah and so are you so shut up and you know right. get over here and do this and uh yeah so I, I was just really really excited and then I got really nervous because you know it's just <laughs> it's a 10 minute you know each of us has like you know 10 minutes or so where we're just reading these chapters alone and so it was mm -hmm. 10 minutes of me talking and I was just like oh gosh there's no one else if this doesn't Just work, skip. it's on me. Yeah. <laughs> I did get to listen to an excerpt of you reading, I believe, right. on like YouTube. So it was very captivating and I'm excited to tune in as well. Um, oh, thank you. Community. Yes. Work, speaking of working with phenomenal, amazing people, you worked with the mother of Black Hollywood, Jennifer Lewis. Okay. I think everybody's a little jealous. <laughs> a little jealous. What I... is that like? I've gotten so many phone calls, text messages from yeah. emails from friends who are like, did, can you please tell her that I love, I was like, it already happened. We already <laughs> did it. We already filmed it. Uh, you know, she's just, she's just been at the top of her game forever. And I'm just really excited mm -hmm. that uh, the entire world now is starting to really understand and really appreciate everything that she is. I, I, I fell in love with Jennifer Lewis when I was about 11 or 12 years old, because I've been acting a long time, and she probably doesn't remember this, I did not bring it up, but we did two episodes of In Living Color together and an episode of A Different World together. Um, you know, just little kid hanging out with all these adults, and mm -hmm. I was obsessed with her. Um, uh, you know, so I've, I've loved her my whole life. Uh, so it was just really exciting to, not just to be in something with her, but then with all the promotional stuff to see my name in right. the same yeah. sentence as hers, it's very humbling. Oh, wow. That's, you know, I can just feel it through the phone. I'm like, oh, wow, that's amazing. That's amazing. Um, give us a brief background of your character. For people that aren't familiar with all Black Boys Aren't Blue, just give us a little synopsis. Uh, well, I, I, uh, I come in in the chapter where uh, George is in college and um, is uh, um, sort of learning that balance we all have to find of, of having fun and also doing your schoolwork. Uh, and for anyone out there who also had to have some sort of coming out during that, it's a real stressful time because you're trying to figure yourself out. You're trying and, and, and there's that, still that little voice that's trying to pull you back into your closet. And so I take him from his freshman year of college, sort of, uh, uh, I take them from their freshman year of college all the way to, um, rushing for, rushing a fraternity, uh, and then what that experience is like, you know, as, as a queer, as a queer person, uh, yeah. finding your, your footing there, um, you know, and all of like the uh, sort of, you know, all of the heat that, that, that they got from, from some of the older brothers, but all of the love that they got from, from their line brothers. And yeah, so that, that's, that's where I, uh, 
that's where I show up. I think the other two guys <laughs> get to sort of take him through the awkwardness of life. And then I get to like, you know, bring him home into adulthood, which is, mm -hmm. uh, which is fun. What has been the response like from your family and friends with just doing this role and maybe just your life experiences too? Uh, I, I am very, very lucky. I happen to have um, a really great family. Uh, they're all excited. They've all registered uh, for their email links to, to watch it. And, um, mm -hmm. you know, they, uh, they just really enjoy um, watching me perform, um, which is a blessing. This is all I've ever wanted to do. Uh, and also to add on to that, like I was one of the very lucky, especially black boys who like when the time came to discuss my sexuality, it was a very love filled and easy um, discussion. Uh, and I, and I'm forever, every day, very grateful for that. What can we expect for this event on Monday? Cause is this your first virtual booking like this? Uh, yes, yes. You know, throughout COVID I've been lucky to like, you know, keep working. Uh, I've done a couple of, you know, I've filmed some stuff in real life. I've done some, uh, some like stage readings via Zoom, but this is my first sort of combination of those things. Right. Uh, so, you know, it's just beautifully done. I mean, this, the set design is so great. The artwork by Love Jones curated that is just great. I mean, the, the costumes by Makisha are just, I mean, I, I took my suit home. Uh, I was so happy when they said, do you want it? It was like, yes. yes um, I think it's just gonna be, it's, it's gonna be really well done. It's gonna be intimate. It's gonna be emotional. Um, my, my, like I said, my other brothers did some really, really beautiful, beautiful work, Delon and, and Bernard. Uh, it was just great to watch them watch them work, uh, you know, um, so yeah. Yeah, and that's what you're gonna get, you know, from, uh, there's, there's the pre-party with, you know, uh, DJ Poison Ivy, and okay. then, we'll, then we'll have a show and a Q and A after, <laughs> it's, it's a whole night, you know, but yeah. get yourself a nice bottle of wine or, you know, a good bourbon or something and just settle in, have a good time. Well, I'm excited, I'm definitely gonna grab my wine. Tell us how we can uh, tune in, where we can watch it at, all that good stuff. Okay, let me get, let me think, think I can get the website right. If you go to abab2021.eventbrite.com, A is an Adam, B is in boy, A is an Adam, B is in boy, 2021.eventbrite.com. Uh, you can register there for free. Uh, just give me your email address and then on Monday you'll get a link and, you know, come join the party. Four o'clock if you want a pre-party, uh, well, I guess seven o'clock Eastern time, four o'clock Pacific, if you want a pre-party, 8 p.m. Eastern, 5 p.m. Pacific, if you just want to show up for the show. Um, like I said, I think it's going to be a really magical event. It's, you know, I've been lucky enough to do a lot of jobs. It's rare for me to walk away from them and feel like that might change someone's world, you know? Mm -hmm. I'm very excited to um, see this play out on Monday. For everybody, make sure you guys tune in to ABAB 2020. 2021. 2021. Yes, we are in 2021.com. Yeah. <laughs> so that um, you can be a part of the, the festivities and you can have your chance to listen and watch um, All Black Boys Aren't Blue. So I'm excited to see you on there, Thomas. Thank you for joining us in the Skylab. Thank you for having me. Yes. Um, make sure you drop your social media handle so that we can find you, follow you. Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm at Tommy Hobson on everything. T-O-M-M-Y-H-O-B as in boy, S-O-N. So Keeps awesome. it nice and easy. <laughs> yeah. Very easy. Very easy to remember. And I'm your girl, Bonnie Banks. Thank you guys for tuning in to Next Level Podcast.